it's so hard to come on the show after you lose to a team that has been struggling for weeks and you lose on your home floor during the Chris Lofton Jersey retirement. Can I just say this? And I'm not saying this because I'm a, I have battered vol syndrome. That's not why I'm about to say what I'm saying, but I, I, I feel like I have to say this. That was the most Tennessee thing ever. It, it was. Yeah. Facts. That was the most interesting thing ever with uh, how, how much was happening, how much was going on on, on campus. Candace Parker's back, Ron Slay, Chris Lofton, C.J. Watson. All the goats are back, and we lose to Kentucky. Tennessee drops to Kentucky 63-56 on their home floor, snaps a 25-game home winning streak after Kentucky just had their snapped by South Carolina. All I got to say is payback is coming in February. I just don't see how they're not going to go up there to rub and and play harder than they've ever played. So, y'all, lot to talk about today. Obviously, we'll dive in a little bit to the UT Kentucky game and the catastrophe of a game that was for the boys. Um, We'll then dive in straight up to this weekend and this past weekend. uh, Rocky Top was literally rocking with recruits from the 2024 class. Ryan Wingo, Jonathan Eccles, so many guys that um, can continue to change the trajectory. And then lastly today, man, really two things. we got to introduce you to a new sponsor of the show. But then lastly, um, Taven Jackson. Wow, bro. Was not expecting that this early, but... It was hey. dude, he, he entered it on Friday and announced it today. I mean, just crazy to think about. But this this the, the question I'm gonna pose as we start the show and later on when we get to the Taven Jackson scene is does that mean Nico Iamaliava is as good as we think? Y'all think already know. Y'all already know what it is, man. It's straight up Tennessee, baby. It's the Monday rundown. Let's get it. What's happening, fam? Welcome to Straight Up Tennessee today on this beautiful Monday, wherever you're watching from, man. Glad you're tuning in today. If you're on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe. Hit that bell at the top, y'all, so you never miss a show. Like, it's really that easy. Everybody, I see so many people commenting, and it's random. It's like, man, I haven't seen Adam in a while. I haven't seen Blockville, Tennessee. I haven't seen Calvin in a while. And then they're like, oh. I'm not I'm not hitting the bell notification. Makes sense. Hit the bell notification, <laughs> y'all. Tune in, man. Keep locking in. Uh, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, we're glad you're vibing with us, man. Download the podcast, comment on the perspective platforms, and continue to rate this thing five stars, baby. Turner, what's good, bro? How you? How you? Uh, how, how you keeping up, man? You tired from the weekend? You feeling good? You, 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 you look different. The boy, look at the boy. The the boy got him one of them. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> Yeah, it got lined up, got clean cut, clean he cut. Said, you feel me? <laughs> he said I was not. He said I was done looking like Jesus. I was done. <laughs> no, bro, I'm good. The Long weekend, but yeah. uh, man, I slept twelve hours last night. I'm feeling like a million bucks today, and I napped today for about an hour after church. So I mean, I'm bro, feeling I've... <laughs> all of those things. <sighs> I haven't done. Ever, I don't think. <laughs> Bro, that's the, that's the first nap I've probably had, and probably since we've had our child, one hundred percent. So I haven't napped. I can't tell you the last nap I took, and the last time I t- slept twelve hours. I couldn't tell you the last time I slept twelve hours. I'm being a hundred percent honest with you. <laughs> that that was the first. Um, that might have been the first time ever I've ever done that. Man. Well, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you hey, feel here, good. Man. There's a Absolutely. there's a glistening in your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, man, it's straight up Tennessee Monday rundown, man. There's a 
there's a few topics, man, we really want to hit today, starting off with the game on Saturday. Um, I, you know, Lance was on the show on the, on the Chop It, on Chop it Up Friday, and the one thing he mentioned that didn't even happen, but Kentucky still found a way to win, the one thing Lance said that I 100% agreed with was if Kentucky can get to 71, they probably can win the game. And they didn't even get to 71. We held them minus seven or minus eight on their season average. And somehow we just didn't shoot the ball well enough. I mean, we shot 40 something percent, which is not horrible. But you, um, you know what? You know what is bad? Yeah, seven missed layups. Well, and we went three for 21 from three point range. We shot 14 yeah. percent from beyond the arc. That's bad. Now, that's really bad, okay? And I think, too, the other thing that got us beat was you got the stats pulled up. I don't right now. I I know for a fact we got out-rebounded by 20. What was it, 42 to 22? 43 to 23. Yeah, that's bad, dude. That's You ain't going to win no games like that. We sent them to the line. 20 it was 20 something times they shot 25 free throws yeah they shot 25 free throws so that's at least 12 times to the line well and, and lance was talking about on the show how they are terrible from the free throw line and they went 22 of 25 that's pretty good you're gonna win the game that way yes. you're also gonna win the game when you miss seven eight nine wide open layups the the first thing i want to talk about is um another thing kentucky said if or, sorry another thing lance said man and it's true Talk to also um, Pastor Kevin Lucas, my man out here in Nashville. Talk to him about it, too. He's a big U.K. fan. They both said the same thing to me in private conversations. They both said if Kentucky's guards play well, they're going to win. Mm-hmm. And C.J. Frederick started out hot, hit 10, had 10 early in the first half. Uh, Kaysen Wallace still hasn't figured it out, uh, the young freshman from Kentucky, which I don't want him to figure it out. Um mm-hmm. But Antonio Reeves went for 18, I believe, um, yep. played great, shot the ball well from the floor, didn't miss a free throw. Um, and you're going to win games like that. They did not play Severe Wheeler, um, the transfer from Georgia. He was there last year, but was at Georgia his freshman year, I believe. And uh, he did not play because of a shoulder soreness injury he's been dealing with really all year. But didn't matter man and i don't think him being on the floor would have necessarily changed the outcome or made it even better or worse for kentucky um but uh he's a true one and he's a true uh he's a dominant ball handler but what happened was kentucky's guards played great and ours played bad zakai ziggler i believe was three for 12 from the field is that right yeah Uh, three for 12 six points Missed Six three points. threes. He's trying to shoot jump shots over Oscar Shibway, who's 6'9". That, I, I was like, you know, uh, Aaron Korn, my homie from Stat Chat Sports, text me. He said, Ziggler just looks sporadic right now. Like, he, did, he never looked comfortable on Saturday, bro. You know, our highest rebounder had four rebounds. Who was that, Kamwa? Adu. Yeah, Kamwa didn't play good either. I don't think he scored. I mean, you said it well. If Euros is our best player during the game, we ain't played good. No, and everybody was. Hey, everybody was excited to see Euro. I was excited to see him turn it on. I mean, bro, we need that. We need that from him. Fact. But he can't. He can't be the best player on the floor in March. Like, let's think about the tournament. If Euros Plasvich is the best player on the floor come March, we're in trouble. Like, yeah, I, no disrespect. However, he can't change the game for us. He cannot change the game for Tennessee. And until Julian Phillips, until Josiah James, until Santiago Vescovi, until Zakai Ziegler, somebody has to take the reins, man. I have said this for weeks. Until somebody shoots. 18 to 25 times a game on this team. Somebody, one person, not the whole team. If one person can just shoot that many times and and be effective in that, we're we're not going to we're, we're we're never going to separate ourselves, man. We're just going to be a balanced team who's solid on defense. And my issue with that is when when we play teams like Kentucky, yeah. Euros 
Juros is not a threat from anywhere outside of eight feet from the rim. Right. He ain't you no, see what I'm saying? He ain't John Fulkerson. No, he, he he he's not a threat from eight feet. Like anywhere outside of eight feet, he's no threat. So that can be stopped. He's not going to contribute from downtown. He's not going to hit threes. He's not going to hit jump shots. He can't change the game. We got to have a guard or a swing man wake up in these next few weeks. Or, bro, I'm just telling you now, everybody, mark my words. At the 10 and a half minute mark of straight up Tennessee Monday rundown. Listen, if we keep doing this and nobody steps out to be the dude, we're going to lose in the first or second round of the tournament. Yeah, I mean, you're not lying. I mean, Julian Phillips got some of his minutes pulled this week. He will not play no defense. No right. defense, bro. Played 18 minutes. No defense. No defense and wasn't scoring the basketball. I don't know. I don't I don't Bro, know. you're a five star. Like, when's the last time? Oh, you know what? I can tell you. Kennedy Chandler. Yeah. Kennedy Chandler is the last true five star we got in who was a, a five star, bro. He could go get a bucket when nobody else could. He could go get a bucket. You said go, go, just go. Bro, he was so great around the rim. Great around the rim. Left, right. He might dunk. He might just step back and shoot a little jump shot. He could get a bucket. I can't say that about Julian Phillips. Can't say and that about no, anybody. You can't say it about Vescovi. You can't say it about Key. You can't say it about Ziggler. Nope. Nobody. I mean, no. There's absolutely nobody on this team. There, there. We got one, two, three, four, five. We got five guys that could be that dude, in my opinion. I think mm -hmm. Josiah James could be that guy. Tyreek Key could be that guy. Vescovi could be that guy. And Julian Phillips. And come on. The thing about this team, just wrapping up the, the, the basketball portion of the show, again, Tennessee loses at home during the Chris Lofton jersey retirement, 63-56. Um, and um, just wrapping up this kind of conversation that we've been having, you know, this team is it's really good when they're shooting well. Like, you're like, dude, we can't be beat, literally. And the problem with balanced scoring is when you shoot bad, everybody shoots bad. Yeah. It's different when you have a team like Alabama. Alabama's got two guys, Brandon Miller, and I can't remember his first name, but something Sears. Mm -hmm. Those are the two dudes that are going to shoot the ball. Like Brandon Miller is going to shoot 15, 20 times a game, and so is Sears. They know that. Yep. So if one of them is off, the other one is definitely picking up the slack. And I'm sorry to say this, dude, Alabama's best team in the country, in my opinion. Dude, they're, they're the they're best team in the country, bro. I don't care. Put them up against anybody. They're the best team in the country. I don't know if you saw this. Arkansas lost to Vanderbilt over the weekend. So Arkansas number 15 team wow. ranked in the country loses to Vanderbilt. Who's unranked. Uh, I knew after the Vanderbilt game against us that they had turned the corner though. They're not a bad team. Their record is, mm -hmm. is way worse than they're actually, they actually are. So um, y'all, it's mm -hmm. a good time to go ahead. You had something else. No, I was just talking about Sears Sears in their last game against Arkansas. He shot it 16 times and had 26 points. See what I'm saying? I mean, we don't have that guy. We don't have that guy. We don't. I mean, bro, they – sorry, sorry. They they played Saturday against LSU. Yeah. They put up 106. Yeah, and they blew them out. What was the final? 106 to 66. They beat LSU by 50. And you see, Sears don't have a good game. He has – I mean, he has a decent game. He uh, shoots the ball nine times, 12 points. Miller, what, what do you have? Thirty-one. Do you see what I'm saying? Times. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. We don't have that, bro. Until we have that, like, ah, uh, that's another conversation for another day, y'all. Great time right now <laughs> to. Again, like, comment, subscribe, man. We want to introduce a new sponsor to the show. That is our family, our friends, our homies over at Whitehead 
auto sales whitehead auto sales serves the honestly the entire knoxville community however they are in blunt county um they serve alcoa maryville blunt they've been voted number one year after year after year you don't believe me i have two vehicles myself from whitehead auto sales check out this quick sound clip from my man nick over at Whitehead Auto Sales. East Tennessee, this is Nick Whitehead with Whitehead Auto Sales in Alcoa. If you have a car buying need, our family of experts has a solution. Our expertise is not just buying the best pre-owned vehicles, but the financing is where we separate ourselves from the competition. Here at Whitehead Auto Sales, we are a preferred dealer for some of the top credit unions and banks in the region. We have one of the best finance programs in the country. Bad credit, previous bankruptcies, collections, repos, and yet we are still able to get people approved. Visit us on Facebook, Instagram, or at whiteheadautosales.com and read the reviews for yourself. It's really a no-brainer. Call us today 233-5335 they will take great care of you myself and my wife we actually have two vehicles from whitehead auto sales I, I haven't seen interest rates that low in my life especially in the season that the interest rates are in right now just the way they take care of you you know the, the way that you can hand select the vehicle you want and you get to a certain threshold if, if you know, they're at the auction and different things happen and you're like, ah, I don't want to go that high. That's OK. They'll be like, we'll get the next one. And they just continue to fight and work for you, the customer. They love you. They do treat you like family. It's not one of those places where it's like, ah, yeah, they say they. No, they really do. Hit up my man, Andy. Go over there. Hit up my man, Nick. And they will take great care of you over there at Whitehead Auto Sales. But, um, man, bro, let's talk a little bit about this weekend as far as recruiting concerns and concerns football. Bro, that list was bananas of how many people were on Rocky Top this week, man. Yeah, dude, it was insane. I mean, I, I think I saw – there were so many video interviews and, like, all kinds of stuff I was just trying to catch up on on YouTube mm -hmm. over the last, like, two or three days. Um, I would say the biggest recruit that everyone's excited about, man, is Ryan Wingo, the five-star wide receiver. He actually has now classified as a five-star number one receiver in the 2024 class. Um, I think that this kid, <laughs> if he could be one and done somewhere, why, why not, why not be Tennessee? And, you know, he definitely could be, bro. He's an athlete, bro. Yes. I'm um, with you, man. It's really good to see Williams Narani there. Edris Farouk. I think that's how you say his name. What a crazy dope name that is. Uh, Boo Carter, the in-state kid over from close to where I'm at. He visits, has a great visit, enjoys his time on Rocky Top. Uh, Marcus Gore, Mike Matthews, the four-star. I mean, there were so many guys. The list goes on and on and on. But I just want to key in on something that a lot of people have been worried about, about Josh Heupel, about this team, um, about just Tennessee in general. A lot of people have been worried that he couldn't do this, what he's doing, bro, like bringing in dogs. He's, bringing he's in doing dudes, it. Man. He's doing it, man. And, you know, I was listening to J.D. Piquel, who is over on the On3 Network, he, he, he explained Tennessee as like building a house. He said, yeah, the, the thing that we know is that they're way ahead of schedule. Way ahead, man. He said, we're looking at a house, which is when the house is way ahead of schedule. You're like, dang, the brick is up. Wow, it's painted. The windows are in. Oh, my yep. gosh. He said, the foundation's been laid. The exterior's been, the roof is on. Like, we're like, oh, my gosh, this is crazy. He says, now this is the year to see if the inside of the house is complete. Yes. Like, this is the year to see if the finishes are right, if the floors were laid right, if the carpet upstairs is looking fire. Like this is the time to see if that, those things are going to happen. And so the future's bright, I think. I, obviously, you know, I hate this thing right now. Here's I can say this. This is the only thing I can say that is it, it just drives me crazy about where we are currently in the state of Tennessee football. I hate having one quarterback for one year. Like, Hendon, okay, his first year, yeah, it, it was good. It was good. It wasn't great. It was good, though. Mm -hmm. Year two, whew, I mean, wow, right? Thanks. And then you see Joe Milton at the end of this year. You're like, bro, we straight. Like, we straight. So mm -hmm. 
we got Joe for one year, though. Like, Joe's going to go out there, put up crazy numbers, do things just like Hendon did, and then everybody's going to be like, he's a legend. Ah. And then we're all going to be we, – we're going to feel like we're back to square one. But I think that just kind of – I think that just comes with uh, when Josh Hopple came to Tennessee. Like, he he's only been here two years, so he don't have that quarterback that he's brought up like you know what i mean nico is going to be the first quarterback that he's going to have for three four years yeah yeah we hope because man by the time he plays he technically could play two years and be done who knows though at this point let's really think about this i hate to say this but joe milton gets hurt it's nico with uh uh david jackson gone it's nico bro like and the, and the 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 whole Taven Jackson thing, uh, it just makes me it just makes me it makes me it don't make me excited about Taven Jackson leaving, but it makes me excited excited inside because it's like Nico must be that good. Yeah, if, if he's already getting out of there. Let's just open up the cam. I know we were gonna wait and talk about it, but Taven Jackson puts his name in the portal on Friday. He goes through bowl prep with the team. He goes to Miami then transfers to Indiana today. This just makes me think he couldn't stay away from home. Mm -hmm. But also that Tennessee was just too big of a stage for him, man. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm going to be I, honest. I think... Like, I can't sugarcoat it. Like, he was one of the guys that built this 2023 class, our 2022 class. Facts. Like, he committed early. He was getting dudes there. You know, Addison Nichols was like his homie. Mm -hmm. And um, I hate that. I hate that part of college football right now. I really do. That. Yeah. Kids can just up and go, but I don't know if you heard they're changing the transfer portal rules. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so they're changing the rules. I, I don't know if this is exactly correct. So, like, don't don't this isn't Bible. Like, don't take this and be like Rook said blah blah blah. But, um, you know, JT Daniels started at Georgia, or sorry, started at USC. Mm -hmm. Transfer from USC to Georgia, mm -hmm. from Georgia to West Virginia, and now he's playing somewhere else this year. Yeah. Emory Jones from Florida to Arizona State. And then from Arizona State, now his, he's finishing his last year at Cincinnati. They are trying to make it where, like, you get, you get two moves. Like, that's it. No, I, think that, I, think that's, I think that's fair. I mean, I don't think you should be able to go to a different college every year. Like, it's bizarre, dude. Like, yeah. that's, that's stupid to me. Like, start, like, really think about that. Why? Why? What do you what why? Mm -hmm. What's yeah. the point in that, to be honest? Like you are you just going to meet everybody and then just be like, all right, y'all, it was cool. Like y'all homies, but I'm out. That's I'm dumb. Out. That's dumb, man. And that, that it makes me wonder, like, what does that do to the high school realm with NIL? Like, yeah. will kids try to transfer to another school because there's more opportunity? I, I don't know, man. No, no, you're hundred percent right, and uh, kind of, kind of, kind of on the portal already. I was looking on here, uh, just going down the list. Walker Merrill signs with Wake Forest. Did he really? Yes. I told you. What did I say? <laughs> I told you. I'm like Wake Forest, Notre Dame, like somewhere like that fits him, bro. Yeah, R.J. Perry, South Florida. Okay. Yep. That's where. Coach Alex Golish went. Uh, Justin Williams Thomas signed with Cal. Well, let's let's rewind though. He signed with Stanford. Yeah, and then was like, I had to make a decision for my family, bro. This shows me that a little bit, and I'm not talking about no kid. Like, dude, mm -hmm. go go eat. But this lets me know that you are a little kind of like you're you're a head case a little bit. Yeah. Like you can't how you commit to a school then be like, nah, I'm going to Cal. Come on, yeah. bro. In the like within a two week span. Yeah. 
I'm come on, you. bro. Come on. I think bro. this. I think this next one. I think this dude will ball out here. I really do. Who? Jimmy Callaway. Oh yeah, Louisville. Yeah, he'll be nice. Him, at Louisville. Yeah, he'll be nice, bro. He's gonna rack up crazy stats at Louisville. Yep. Uh, Jordan Phillips signed with Maryland. All right. You know Jimmy Holiday, Western Kentucky. WKU. I couldn't remember if it was Western or Eastern. And then Jawan Mitchell ain't picked. And then, dude, ours right here. I, I was just, I, it's, I was looking at these. I knew them, but just refreshing my mind. Yeah. Commits that we got from the portal. Dante Thornton. God. Eat. I watched some of his highlights the other day, bro. Bro, he's 6'5", 185. So he's not that big, but he's hard to go down. Dude, and he'll he'll he lowered his shoulder a couple times, bro. He ain't scared, bro. No, he ain't scared. Some some sites say he's two hundred, so who knows? <laughs> we gonna know come come fall when I see his picture in the orange tie. You feel me? When I mm-hmm. when I pull up on UT Sports and I see him with his black tux with his orange tie, he gonna be like this, yeah, <laughs> with his grill in. You know what I'm saying? Facts. And you got Omar Norman. Defensive lineman gonna be nasty, bro. He's gonna play immediately. I'm telling you. The Miami tackle, John, John Campbell. Campbell. Woo, Yasersky. I mean, I forget Keenan P- Palee from Dude, BYU linebacker. We, we just forgot about him. He's I mean, still. Hey, this is gonna be bananas, man. Our offensive tackle Andre Carrick. Yeah, from Texas. Tight end McAllen Castles. UC Davis. I mean, kicker Charles Campbell. We need somebody with Chase gone for sure. Dude, I mean. <laughs> you hype, ain't you? I am. I'm hopping I'm about ready. Dante Thornton. Thornton. Don- <laughs> Thornton. After you see, after you go and watch a couple highlights, you're like, okay, let me go watch another one to make sure. Like, he really that nice. And he didn't even have that mu- This is the thing about him. He didn't even have that much of a body of work at Oregon. I mm-hmm. can't wait to see how Hypo moves him around in this offense, bro. It'll be insane. He's going to be everywhere. He's going to be everywhere, bro. Because I was watching the highlights. He played everything for Oregon. He played slot, and he played outside, too. He is going to be everywhere. I'm telling you, bro. I can't wait. I'm excited for Dante. Mac 11 is what, they, what he calls himself. Big Mac. Mm. Big Mac. Oh uh, y'all, man! Wrapping up the Monday rundown, bro. This been a this been solid. I, I love I love Monday, man. It's probably our shortest show of the week because midweek chat we literally just be on here chopping, and then mm-hmm. when it comes to chop it up Friday, we really be chopping. So, um, y'all, I just want to end the show thanking Tennessee Sporting Goods for supporting the giveaway again. Uh, you guys know, man, Tennessee Sporting Goods is the sole provider of all straight up Tennessee merchandise. Um, if you're in the market for anything from hats to T-shirts, sports letterman's jackets, just give them a call. 865-688-5454. Ask for Taylor. They're going to take great care of you if you're in the market for anything for your sporting goods, man. Turner, this has been the Monday rundown, Brody. You got anything else today? I'm man. good, bro. Hey, y'all, uh, just final final news, man. Tennessee has obviously basketball. This week, um, they got to bounce back quickly. I I don't think they can wait. So they play at Mississippi State on Tuesday and then Saturday at LSU. It's a road week, man. So um, Mm -hmm. big week. Uh, LSU is a horrible place to play. Uh, Mississippi State, I think we should handle business on Tuesday night. So um, can't wait, y'all. We'll be back. Obviously, you already know the vibes, man. We'll be back on Wednesday for the midweek chat. Uh, Don't know if we'll have anybody on the show this week, but obviously – coming with the alabama game man big steve my boy stephen collie uh will be on the show and uh i'm a little scared because he got a lot to talk about because them boys nice nice so y'all y'all already know what it is baby it's straight up tennessee for my man turner it's your boy ruck and it's straight up tennessee baby we'll see you back wednesday